welcome to Yoga Express, the mobile stretch clinic that takes yoga to the people. My name is Banu Suresh. To my left is our special guest, Douglas Stewart. To Douglas's left is Eloisa Dumont. To Eloisa's left, Lucy Benjamin. To my right is Judy Jacob. And to Judy's right is our new guest, Zen Zaidin Abdullah. Zaid, did I get your name right? Yes. Good. I'm going to continue. We are going to continue on from our last episode. We still have a few questions that are unanswered, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more from people who are watching this show. So please send us all your requests, your questions, your concerns. We'll either have Douglas or another teacher and instructor. And I know Douglas is too modest. He doesn't want me to use the word expert as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> he is an expert. He's my teacher, too. We will all help you address those questions. Zai, would you like to go with the first question? Yeah, um, how do I like recall these poses when, when I get here, the postures rather, when I get home? Douglas? Oh, that's amazing, wonderful question. Um, when, you know, I think that the body remembers. And uh, when you get home and long after your practice, you will gravitate towards the, body, towards the posture that was interesting to you and that you felt the most expansion in, or maybe even that was the most challenging. And um, wow, I really felt my back elongate when I actually took a back bend here, opening up the heart actually able to just extend a little bit your body will remember that sensation of expansion and you'll automatically you it's in you you'll know it I remember before we started this episode Douglas used the term muscle memory I thought that was so catchy because your body does have muscles which like certain postures and you'll gravitate towards postures that you know that you really enjoy and you end up doing them very well as well when you like something you do it well when you do it well you like it a lot more at the same time, uh, what I used to do when I started practicing Douglas, I would start taking notes because I don't trust my memory. So I'd put everything down on paper, and then I'd find that different schools use different names for the same posture. So I'd start researching it a little more, and that's how we put the sequence of 48 plus together. I found there is a common denominator set of postures that are used in all schools. So you can make your own little sequence, and something that helps for you, depending on the kind of job you do, the kind of work you do, and trust it to muscle memory. Would uh, Judy, uh, Lucy, would, do you have another question? I think you did have one before we started this episode, didn't you? Um, well, I think, I don't believe we have answered completely what is the difference between Ashtanga and Hatha Yoga. <laughs> we were going to have a whole episode on that. Okay. But I'm sure, Douglas, if you Why want to start Why don't you go right ahead? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you take that one? All it's right. Expert Lucy. <laughs> Lucy, you put me, put me in a spot. But we're going to do the best because we are planning to have a whole episode on that. Oh, good. The way I understand Ashtanga is Ashta is eight, Anga is limbs eight limbs or eight body parts. And Ashtanga Yoga contains eight different sections. There's social discipline, personal discipline, breathing practice, posture practice, concentration, meditation, and sublimation. So uh, you have, no, withdrawal of senses, concentration, and meditation. So you have all these eight, uh, sublimation is the last one, you have these eight limbs that you try to make it a whole way of life. In the Western world, Ashtanga is associated with something more powerful, more intense workout. In the East, where yoga is considered, um, well, it's considered to have originated there, I don't know, maybe East was just a caretaker of yoga, but Hatha yoga is considered more intense. It's a more physical type of uh, uh, practice. And Hatha Vinyasa is a flowing physical type of practice. But this is a whole episode in itself, so we will go into that. There are styles, there are kinds, and before this episode started, Douglas and I were talking about this Swara Yoga, that's yoga of breath, there's Hasya Yoga, yoga of laughter, there's the Kundalini Yoga, yoga of rising energy, so you have opened a can of worms, mm -hmm. happy worms, yeah. but we're going to get into a whole episode for that. But there's, there's plenty, there's a lot to discuss, and it's a wonderful question. We will give you a whole episode just for you, Lucy. How's that? Thank you. Let's go into some stretches. Would uh, 
Judy, would you like to choose sure. a posture? And yeah. don't be too hard on yourself. Pick one that you... I know, someone that's not suited for pose, but... Um, hmm. We'll all join you, and Douglas is going to help you, and we will Have all we join Have we done this one, number 20? The, the, the number 20, Marjoria, uh, let me see. Yes, Marjoria or Cat. We've no, we that. haven't done it in this episode. No, probably with Lots Amber in the last episode, last couple of episodes yeah, we did, away. We did do that one. That's okay. If you it's enjoy okay. it, we can it's do that. It's a there. nice one. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. Ella is a no. She did the demo for yeah. that. All oh, right. You, you, do, yeah, yeah. you do know. Come on, Judy. Okay. Douglas, you're going to talk us through this. All right. We're all going to join you. So, Judy, you're taking the center mat there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and those of you that want to join in, you're on hands and knees, everybody. You're on hands and knees. And separate your knees so that they're about hip width apart from one another. And uh, your arms or your shoulders are open about hip width apart or shoulder width apart from one another. And um, let your body's weight uh, be distributed evenly over your knees and over your hands. Discover that. There you go. That's it. Now, when you take a full breath in, Lift your sternum or your breastbone forward and up and let your eyes and sit bones lift up as well. There you go. And when you're breathing out, let your navel draw right up towards the ceiling. Let your navel lift towards the ceiling and look toward your navel. When you're breathing in, let your sternum or your heart reach forward and up, your eyes reach up and your sit bones draw up. And when you're breathing out, let your navel rise right up towards the ceiling. It feels like your spine is like a dome and you're looking toward your navel. Breathing in, your sternum or your breastbone reaches forward and up. Feel your shoulder blades now reach down your back. As you're breathing out, round your spine by carrying your navel up towards the ceiling and look toward your navel. Give yourself two more rounds of this vinyasa. And now round. One more. Keep the back of your neck open if you can. There you go. And now stretch the back by letting your navel lift, toning the abdominal muscles, stretching the trapezius and the rhomboids and the lumbar. There you go. That's it. And come out of the pose then. Oh, that feels beautiful. Feels I feel like a wave good. in the ocean yeah. going Very up good. and coming yes. back. Thank yeah. you. Douglas, did you also have us, did you intend for us to combine the breathing? Because I tried to inhale. You did mention inhale as you go up. Yeah. And when you come down, exhale. So what are we doing there when we are exhaling? What's happening? Are we collapsing our core muscles to get the concave shape? Well, if you notice that as you're sitting here breathing, if you pay attention to your breath, and even if you're um, listening to me uh, not in the studio, if you're watching your breath, you'll notice that as you breathe out, the body just sort of draws in anyway. Right. The mm -hmm. skin of your bones and the body just sort of draws towards the very core. When you're breathing in, you notice that there's an expansion of your physical body. So we're just sort of enhancing that. When you're breathing in, we're letting the body expand. And when we're breathing out, we're just noticing and following the body's natural tendency to draw in. We're so that's not, what makes you look like a cat? And that's what yeah. makes you look like a cat. You're inviting those muscles, but we're not wailing on those muscles right. to do it. Right. You know, there is a the difference between just over tensing and then just allowing the movement to... So filling the lungs with air and then just taking all the air out of our system. Exactly. So that, that's oxy oxygenating the organs inside the body. Complete breathing. It does breathing. feel good. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it feel yeah, great? Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Feels really good. Mm -hmm. Let's have one more demo. Eloisa, I believe you have not done a demo in this episode, yes? Well, not, no. All right. No, I didn't. Um, I think um, the 47. 47? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that Viparita Karani? What is Sup that? Supta Parivrita, it's a supine twist. Okay. No, a 47, I think she meant the second last one, not 37. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. oh, okay, yes. Yeah. And okay. I think it's the one where you have one, both legs are straight, and you're, then you're supine, and your okay. one leg goes over. But so. you, you're going to 
Well, we keep our head facing the camera. How's that? Keep our legs to the wall. Is that okay, Dallas? That's fine, yeah. Right. However you want to set us Elisa? up. Elisa, come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we start? Do you want us on our back? Um, how is, uh, is she, mm -hmm. you, you okay. want the like head here? here yeah, no, Elisa, I'll have a head towards the camera, that side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah that's good. Okay. And so everyone else is on your back, too? Yes. And there you go. Good night, everybody. And let your legs <laughs> extend forward and down. There you go. There you go. Everyone, bend your elbows so that your fingers relate to the ceiling. And now clear your shoulder blades from the ground a little bit. Just lift them and, and then let them come down onto the mat again, more flush against the ground. And then let your arms relax down along the sides of your thigh bones or pelvis. There you go. That's it. And just be here for a moment. Just be here for a moment. And now draw your right knee toward your torso wrapping your right hand around your right shin, or wrapping your hands around your shin bones. While at the same time that the right thigh bone draws toward your torso, let the left thigh bone reach deeper down into the ground. The left thigh bone just simply drops deeper down into the ground while your right thigh bone draws toward your torso. There's that opposition. That's it. Do you feel the stretch on the hip flexor on the left side? Oh, A little yeah. bit of stretch on the Feels hamstring? Delicious. Um, <laughs> now, using your left hand on your right knee, carry your right knee over to the left side of your body. That's it. And with your um, right hand reaching to the right wall. You may discover here that you're needing a block, your um, block underneath the knee. If it's too much of a stretch, you can use your prop there. That's it so that you're absolutely supported in the pose. You want to make sure here that your breath flows. That your breath flows. You're looking to your right. There you go. That's it. When you breathe in, just feel or imagine that the vertebra in your spine can separate. That indicates a complete breath in. And when you're breathing out, see if you can drop deeper into this shape. Just simply let go into it. You got it. Come out of the pose, everyone, by letting your right buttock come onto the ground again. That's it. And change legs. Bring your left knee toward your torso. And let your right leg extend out long. Wrap your hands around your left shin bone. So now as the left thigh bone reaches deeper toward your torso, the right thigh bone drops deeper down into the ground. That's it. Then, with your right hand on your left knee, carry your left knee over to the right side of your body. There you go. And you're using your breath here so that you'll know exactly how far your body needs to go to feel expansion or to allow circulation. I've got you here so that your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was worried about. Oh my God, I wanna hear it. Bit. You're fine, man. That's <laughs> absolutely fine. And now everybody, feel your breath flow through the pose. It's just about breathing. These poses are like constellations that the navigators use to move towards a particular place. These are like constellations, in my mind anyway, that we're using to invite circulation to specific regions of your body and to integrate the mind and the body. To come out of the pose, bring your left buttock onto the mat again. And now we'll need to um, recover the spine by bringing your knees toward your torso. That's it. Just hold here for a breath or two. Just hold here. and then rock up to sitting. It feels like I'm wringing my body, and sometimes mm. I, I do very often forget to breathe when mm. I'm sort of, you know, it's like wringing clothes, and yeah. then you're in that yeah. twist, mm -hmm. and you forget to breathe, and I feel like yelling out, say, guys, don't forget to breathe, I yes. need you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. No, but it does feel when you wonderful. turn your body yeah. and you breathe, you can feel everything you that you... You can feel you everything moving. 
It's all getting massaged. On. Yeah, all the, the organs the, are getting the, massaged. The muscles that is being there, never used, sleeping huh? forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. And then you just feel it. Oh, it's alive. <laughs> Did we just do two? How many of we you have two. not demonstrated? We've done Eloisa and Judy. Mm -hmm. We have time for a couple of questions more, and then we'll have two more demos with Lucy and Zai. Any other questions? Eloisa and Judy, do you have a question for us? You Did know, you? it makes me wonder, what's the difference between exercise? How does yoga differ from exercise, regular you know, gym That's such exercise? a good question. Yeah, How is yoga Douglas's different area. than <laughs> exercise? Well, exercise and yoga are both beneficial. I, you know, everyone should exercise. I think it's so important to exercise. Um, the difference between the two um, in my mind is that yoga, our main primary focus is to integrate the physical body and the mind. And when those two aspects are completely aligned with one another, it's almost as if then we just sort of flower into spirit. Mm -hmm. And there is this great alignment of mind, body, spirit. Mm -hmm. Whereas in exercise, we might just be focusing on one particular mm -hmm. aspect of ourselves. There's no mental involvement, right? You might. You know, you can watch the, Spain. you can read the newspaper right. while you're on the show. <laughs> yeah. You can talk on the phone. Exactly. You Take can message. do whatever. Yeah, but right. when you're practicing yeah. yoga, you are completely absorbed present, yeah. in that thing. In the moment, totally present in the moment. I also find, and please correct me if I'm wrong, in yoga, we typically <coughs> tend to use abdominal breathing, whereas when we do other forms of exercise, we use thoracic breathing. Yeah. You know how they say, take a deep breath. In right. yoga, you're right. actually your exhale matters more. Isn't that correct? It's more detoxing when you exhale. It's, uh, well, one of the classes, actually, the instructor taught me that. So I hope I'm not wrong, but I'm trying nowadays to exhale a lot more. Well, you know, here's, a, here's, a, here's one thing that we can learn about the breath. When you're exhaling, you're actually causing the mind and the body to relax. Ah, okay. When There's you lengthen your it. exhale, you're actually inviting the relaxation response. Right. Right. When you increase your inhale, you're actually stimulating yourself for activity. Mm. So you, you may want to do, if you find that your day, you've just been sort of dragging yourself around and you need some full breaths right. in, you that's indicating in that you're needing to do that. Wonderful. If you've been sort of ramped up all day long and you're needing to sort of chill a little bit, then maybe those longer breaths might be the key. Oh, so. that's really so good because that's, that now I understand why they say do chest openers in the daytime yes. because it opens you up and you inhale more. And then you do forward folds at nighttime helps us sleep because you exhale more and you're folding forward. Wow, that makes so much more <laughs> sense. It sure does. Also, another thing I find, Douglas, I think a lot of the other forms of exercise, Judy, seem to be very program paced, whereas yoga is self paced. You can go at your own pace and you can you don't have to do a twist to the complete uh, turn to get the full effect because your body is ready to go only three quarters. That means you're doing the most that your body allows you. And slowly, you're going to be getting there. So I find that very helpful for me because there are a lot of twists and inversions that I'm almost terrified of. Mm. So I find I'm just going you know, one millimeter per day. So I, we'll get there. <laughs> little by little. And you know what I love to say to my students is that there is no rush. Exactly. With the yoga process or the practice, there's no rush to get anywhere. The moment <laughs> is important. Like that, yes. nope. You know, our only rush, if you will, is to be absorbed completely in the moment. Wonderful. Did that, that, that's what yoga is different of, I think. That's yeah. what makes the difference between mm -hmm. yoga because you dedicate the time for yourself, right. not for uh, uh, sharing with the, with the phone or with the, with the uh, TV uh, or whatever, or even the entertaining to see beautiful people around you. You just have, you can have thousands of people and be in a, in a, uh, yeah. You know, in a millions of uh, in the middle of a uh, Times Square, hey, that's <laughs> and, and, time. and, and, Very and, good. and and be with that. yourself, a, a dedicating a moment for yourself. That's the difference between the exercise. You do the exercise just like you drive a car, 
But the yoga is different than Me all time in the middle of Times Square. Yeah. Ellis, I'm the, so oh, glad yeah, you brought yes. that up because Douglas can speak to that concept. He yes. created <laughs> the summer solstice at oh, Times yeah. Square. Oh, Douglas, yes. please tell us oh, a little yeah. bit well, about that. Well, thank you for a segue <laughs> into that. It's, uh, you know, my friend and I, Tim Tompkins, who is the president of Times Square Alliance, um, he and I were talking one day, I think at lunch or dinner, about um, the, you know, Times Square is responsible for the ball dropping every New Year's Eve, and um, Tim was exploring something, um, how, what can we do in, this, in the summertime that has just that much excitement, and he was my yoga student, my private yoga student at the time, and we well, let's see if we can do yoga in Times Square, and, wow. Wow. you know, and then over That's the years it has blossomed. Yeah. How long Such a there? wonderful concept. Can you imagine, in the yeah. middle of all the yes. bustling traffic, yeah. we are internalizing the experience. And I have been there two years in a row, so I know it's really fabulous. What I find is very the generosity of giving that to people to come in from all walks of life and just to offer it to people. That's wonderful because yeah. it's the mind, body, the whole thing. So connected. It's Thank like you. an oasis. An oasis yeah. in the middle, middle of the Times Square. Square. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We love it. Yeah. Yeah. So we love it. You can find peace yes. anyway. right. it's within you, A. Exactly. Yes. And then once you found it, it just exudes. You yeah. know, there's yeah. no containing it. So. Do we have any other questions or shall we go into our next two demos? Zai, you ready? Did yes, you pick a posture? Go ahead, Zai. Um, and then it's you, Lucy, nope. right? Oh, you okay. haven't done a demo yet. <laughs> Or do you want to watch Lucy first? And I then want to watch Lucy first. All right, Lucy, there you go. You're that's, it. That's perfect because I have one talking about the break in the back. Yeah. And, and, and so let me see where do you have it here. Um, it's um, sort of, of like the, the upward up dog, is it, that you sort of bend? The cobra, the, the 36. All the blue the ones are all or back the, bends. You or, have the, seen. or the... You know, maybe I should demonstrate oh, just it. just the number, yeah. But I'm trying, trying to remember. Or I'm number one was what we were working on. Do you want to try that one? Do you see number yeah, that's one? A good the back one. Yeah. Right. Okay. We were working on that, but what I wanted to know is when you're on the floor uh -huh. and you have, if there are two times that I've had a difference. One is when your knees are there and you and you keep going back, and uh -huh. one is when you're upwards, your knees are off, and you. What's the oh, okay. difference? That's a more intense version of bujang, and I think which the other is. One. Are you describing Ustrasana, camel? Is no, that she's saying the prone position. Oh, prone. Bujang, yeah. Yeah. Bujangasana. Bujang, and then you go uh, into the upright elbow. Oh, right into, oh yeah. yeah. And then there's one that uh, where you lift your, your knees also. So okay, Julie. Really, uh, Lucy is very And the hard. other one is where you just, when you do have the knees, I feel the difference in the back. Yeah. Where So I, I don't know if. Uh, you know, well, let's we've, see. We've the got the correction. posture with the knees on the floor. You're very ambitious. I, I love that, Lucy. Well, I yeah. just, just want to do it right. That's the Cobra. point. So you're, you're so 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 we're going into number 36. Yeah. Cobra. So, all right. Yeah, yeah. That's the then you Douglas go is going to help. All right. So, so um, Lucy, let your everybody then yeah. um, bring your torso down onto the mat at first. Okay. Yeah, we'll start from there. Okay. And adjust your hands now so that they're just slightly below your sternum just slightly below, right. there you go. And let your elbows um, draw towards one another mm -hmm. rather than letting them splay apart from mm -hmm. one another. Now, here's the important part, is to feel all 10 toenails against the mat. Can you let each toenail come onto the ground? Mm -hmm. That's a challenge right <laughs> oh, there, wow. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> and we haven't even yeah. done anything yet. <laughs> but I, haven't even, I haven't even thought we have to use the toes. <laughs> yes, it's the whole body that's oh, wow. involved and uh -huh. mind. All yeah, ten toes, ten toenails come onto the ground. So that's the first part. The mm -hmm. pose starts way down there. Now, everyone, let your thigh bones relax down into the ground. Just feel your thigh bones relaxing into the ground as all ten toenails come into the mat. Beautiful. Now, see if you can feel your hip bones relating more forward rather than relating back toward your knees. Let your hip bones relate more forward. There you go. And that invites space in the lumbar. Mm -hmm. Now, with all of that articulation there, see if you can peel your sternum forward and up away from the ground. Mm -hmm. There you go. And hold there, just there, letting your breath flow. That's it. Let the hip bones draw forward. That invites space. Let your thigh bones relax down. That prevents grip in the buttocks. There you go. 
and then ease your torso down onto the ground and come out of the pose, sitting back on your heels. That's it. They just gave us the two. We have about a minute and a half left. Have we all had a chance to ask Douglas at least one of our questions? Yes? Yes. Great, and we've also got into at least one posture each. Actually, Zai, it's your turn. <laughs> and you know it's I was with, hoping oh, you would no. forget. <laughs> How could we? Come thank on, we have about a half you. a minute. Yes, because I, I so um, thank you. Pick one that may not be too complicated is, because we want to see you complete the posture. We're going to do it with you. <laughs> okay. Um, How about the first one? Yeah. It's a nice chest opener. Douglas, she's going to go. Zai is going to go with the first posture. Let's uh, the stand standing up. one. Oh, yeah. right. So that's a similar a similar expression and now that we're uh, we're upright though so as I come right into the center if you would please and uh, for now everyone I think on the card the we're there in Tadasana but open your feet and we'll we'll start there open your feet so that they're about hip width apart from one another there you go and uh, soften the backs of your knees just a little bit just a little bit in order to bring the kneecaps upward can you draw that? And now you feel this great sense of rooting through your heels. Is that true? Yes. Now, let your hip bones draw up. And let your hands reach up towards the ceiling at the same time that you're breathing in. Keep the hip bones lifting upward. Keep your kneecaps lifting upward. Let your heels reach down and let your heart now draw towards the ceiling. Feel your shoulder blades reaching down. There you go. Careful. Your palms are just reaching upward towards the ceiling, and your shoulder blades draw down. The hip bones draw upward, and there's a little bit of softness at the backs of your knees so that your heels reach towards the ground. There you go. If you want to bring your palms to touch one another, you certainly can as you take this posture. Let your breath flow now, Zai. There you go. That's it. Come upright, everybody chin to your collarbone, just regulate your blood pressure if you're needing to, and then let your hands relax down. There you go. That was a wonderful closure, Douglas, to yeah. our episode number five. Thank you so much, all of you, for being with us today, and thanks to the viewers, too. Zai, you did a great job. Thank Please, you. take your place on mm -hmm. your mat, and we're all going to say namaste for the first time. We're using a Sanskrit word. Namaste is just goodbye. Namaste is said for everything. Good morning, good night, goodbye, wh whatever. But we just want to say thank you to everybody. We are all going to get into our favorite postures while we wind down. If anyone has special requests, please send them in to us. We will have Douglas and other teachers being our special guests from time to time. And we will try and get you the answers. If we don't have it right away, we'll look it up. And we will talk to people who will be able to help us with the answers. Thank you. I'm going to go into my favorite posture. We'll do our favorite stretches. Okay. Free for all. <laughs> Let's see.